Hey guys, welcome back to WTF Homestead. I'm Jenny. Today is week one for my challenge to myself of making a new meal once a week that I've never made before. So tonight I have a butternut squash soup with smoked sausage. I'm also making some uh, Parmesan pepper, uh, peppercorn French bread. And then for dessert, I'm going to be using some, um, I just, I just canned, I'm not sure if the video has come out yet or not, but I just canned some pineapple pie filling, or actually it's just pineapples in some, uh, medium heavy syrup, um, that I'm going to be turning into a pineapple crisp instead of an apple crisp. So, but I, I actually, I got started on a couple of things that I did not film and it just dawned on me. So I thought I would bring you in and show you. So first of all, I have my bread is in my bread maker. I don't know if you can hear it. It just started kneading again. It's down in there doing its thing. Um, still have three hours left on it. So I've got a little bit of time. Um, but I also got my um, butternut squash. I've got it roasting along with um, some roasted garlic. So let me pull this out and show you. It's pretty much done. See if y'all can see that there. So I have the butternut squash. All I did was cut them in half and I drizzled some olive oil over the top and then sprinkled them with salt and pepper. And the same thing with the garlic. I just cut the tops off of the garlic um, down to where uh, probably about like a half an inch or so off the top of the garlic. And then I drizzled um, olive oil on top and then sprinkled them with salt and pepper and then wrapped each clove in um, some foil. I have never roasted garlic, or at least not that I can remember. I don't remember ever. I've eaten it, but I don't think I have ever roasted any. So this is brand new to me and it smells just incredible right now. So um, I just got the, it, they've got a few minutes left on them. I'll put that back in the oven right quick. Um, just want to do it until the, the um, butternut squash is, you can put a fork in it or a knife or whatever, and it's tender, but then if they've got a cool. So I wanted to leave them uh, plenty of time to get them down to room temperature where I can where I can handle them a little bit better. But I just wanted to show you, it just dawned on me that I did not come in and film that. I don't know why I wasn't thinking so. Um, but so it's gonna be a little bit, but I just wanted to show you how much that is. And I will bring you guys back here in just a little bit when I get ready to start putting the soup together. I'm super excited. Um, it's cold outside, so soup sounded good. So um, I'll see you guys back here in just a little bit. Hey guys, okay, I'm back. Um, we have about 30 minutes left on my bread over there. So I figured I'd, it's about time. It says to cook this about 20, 30 minutes to let it sit here. So we'll go ahead and get it going. I've got most of my stuff measured out here. So all right now I'm just gonna turn on my stove. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil. Now this recipe, I believe said that it will make, um, I believe it said eight servings. I'm, I'm gonna half it for us. So I'm only gonna use half of the uh, butternut squash and half of an onion, you know, things like that. Um, but I will put the full recipe and I've forgotten, I found it on Pinterest. Um, I'll, I'll put the link down there <clears throat> below so you guys can go see the full recipe. And I am making a couple of changes because I, I thought I had everything for this and I didn't. I was, um, it called for cumin and I didn't have any. So I got in there and was, and I, which is so weird because I always have some in my pantry, but I couldn't find any. So um, I got in there and, and started digging around and stuff and I'm going to substitute it with garam masala. We love curry. It has a little curry flair to it. so. I'm hoping that that's a good, um, I, I was actually looking up a few recipes and there are a lot of curry, um, butternut squash type recipes. So I think it'd be a pretty good uh, swap over there. Um, anyway, so other than that, I think everything else should be right by the recipe, I believe. Um, but I will link the recipe down below. So we're gonna heat up our um, olive oil here just a little bit and I'm gonna put in my onion. 
and it just called for a medium onion. It didn't say what color. All I had was a red onion, so hopefully that'll be okay. Um, and then, and of course, I'm just doing half of it. And then I, I just pulled the um, butternut squash out of, I just got my spoon and dug it out away from the skin. I don't know what I'm going to do with the other half. Who knows if this turns out really good. I may end up going ahead and making the other half of this and and we'll have it tomorrow. So anyway, I'm just going to cook this for just a few minutes. butternut squash I think sweet I think like pumpkin pie and and things like that and there definitely is a little bit of a sweet a sweetness to it I don't know if I would have thought to make it in a soup like this but however I have before um, I used to cook Whenever I was working, I used to cook baked potatoes in my crock pot all the time. I put it on, put them on before I went to work, and then they were done when I got home. And I would chop them into large pieces, throw them in my crock pot, throw in a bunch of butter, salt, pepper, garlic, stuff like that, put my lid on it, walk away. When we got home, we had baked potatoes that we would, you know, do things with. Anyway, one day, I got ready to go to work. And I had one, uh, one or two, I don't remember, little bitty regular potatoes left, but I had a huge uh, sweet potato. And so just kind of on a whim, I decided, what the heck? So I chopped it up and threw it in there with it with all the same stuff, salt, pepper, tons of garlic, butter, all that stuff, threw the lid on it. Those were some of the best potatoes. I, I would never would have thought to put the garlic and stuff like that with that. So just as a hint to any of y'all if you haven't tried it yet try that because it was so 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 good I'm just going to brown this a little bit here get my recipe so I'm sure I hope I'm not missing anything okay I'm going to add in my seasonings here and this is just salt um, it called for two teaspoons of either pumpkin pie spice or cinnamon. That's one of those that I thought the pumpkin pie spice sounded with the, the ginger and stuff. I, I don't know. I was afraid that would be too sweet. So I'm just doing cinnamon. And then, of course, my garam masala instead of the instead of the uh, cumin. Oh, my gosh. That smells so good. Okay. And then I'm going to do three cups of, hold on, sorry, uh, I'm going to do three cups of uh, chicken stock, chicken broth. smells so good okay I'm gonna bring this up to a boil and then once it hits a boil I'm gonna put the lid on it and turn it down to simmer and it's gonna simmer for about 20 minutes okay guys I'm back um, I just wanted to give you an update so this uh, really started uh, boiling and it was getting really well, actually, it was really watery in the beginning. Um, and so I tasted it, and it's good, but I honestly thought it needed something else. So I did put the other half, so it does have the whole squash in it now, the whole butternut squash. Um, and then I had like maybe a half a cup left of um, the um, chicken broth in that box, so I dumped it in there. That's all I've done. And I'm just letting this sit here and simmer. Um, but I thought while we're doing this, I will turn on my oven and I will get the pineapple crisp going. 
Now this one, I am totally going off on my own here. Um, there are tons of recipes out there for apple crisps and stuff like that. And the crumble stuff that you put on top is basically a brown sugar, a um, little bit of flour, rolled oats, cinnamon, things like that. You just kind of make a crumbly mixture with it and then you crumble it over the top of an apple pie filling and bake it and it's awesome. I've made it a hundred times and we love it. It's one of our favorites. That's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, can these pineapples this way because I wanted to do a few different things. I, I want to do the pineapple. I'm going to do, um, I want to really do some blueberries, blackberries, things like that and, and get us some different ones going. But we both absolutely love pineapples. So I thought I'm going to play, do this one, but I'm going to kind of play with it a little bit. So um, I've got my dish here. Let me move y'all down just a little bit. Hopefully you can see that there. Okay, so I have just a little dish here that I'm gonna cook it in. This is my pineapple that I just canned uh, day before yesterday. Let me get. A can opener. And it's sealed, I don't know if you heard that. Oh, oh my gosh. It smells so, so, so good. Let me get a spoon. I don't know if I want all this juice in here, so I'm gonna try to... This is just a pint-sized jar, so... Yeah, I think I'm gonna save out just a little bit of that juice. Just a little bit. We'll leave some of that out. We'll find something to do with that. So I don't know if you can see, there is a little bit of juice down in there, but not a lot. And it is a little, that's kind of why I was uh, wanting to leave some of it out because it's not quite like a, um, like a pie filling. It's not quite that thick. I was afraid that it would be too sweet if I tried to make an actual pie filling out of the pineapple. So I opted to do it this way. We're gonna see how it works. So for the topping, I have just the usual stuff um, that you would put in there. I've got the um, brown sugar. I have a little bit of flour. I've got my butter, everything for it. But what I'm gonna do different is instead of rolled oats, I have done a mix of um, chopped nuts and some coconut. So I just thought it kind of sounded good. Um, we're gonna give it a whirl. And I thought, well, if I've got a curry kind of a thing going over here, then why not some coconut? So that's what I'm gonna do. That's my play on it this time. So I have, this is probably about a cup, maybe a little bit over a cup of a mix between coconut and nuts here. And I'm gonna put, um, this is about a quarter cup of brown sugar and a little less than a quarter cup of flour. And I'm just gonna use my spoon here and kind of mix it all together. And I always make way too much crumble, but we like the crumble. So we actually prefer this opposed to a, like a pie with a pie shell. On these anyway, with like fruit pies. Neither one of us are like huge fruit pie people, but you put it in just a pan and put a crumble on top and we're all over it. So I just mix that together, just kind of evenly coat everything there. And then I have, I don't know, there's probably like three tablespoons of melted butter in here. This is one of those recipes that I, I, I don't measure. I don't, I, it's totally an eyeball thing. Um, I've made this where I've had too much butter in it. Oh, I got a little gnat flying around where I've had too much butter in it. Um, and it's been a little bit runny and it's turned out fine and then I've made it like this one's going to be kind of dry and they turn out fine But I wanted this one to be a little bit dry because I knew that the pineapple was going to be pretty wet. So I've got my oven uh, preheating to 350 And then see it's just it's just kind of it's just wet. It's not really, or just moist even. It's not even wet. It just is a crumble. It's just crumbly. And all I'm gonna do is pour that right on top of the pineapples. And that is it. I'm gonna stick it in the oven and it'll probably take about um, 20 to 30 minutes roughly, somewhere right in there. 
um, once it's hot and bubbly is really all you want. And we're going to serve this with some ice cream. So super hot with ice cream is the way to go. So I'm gonna throw this in the oven. We still have a few minutes left on that, a few minutes left on my bread. I'm gonna clean up my mess and I will see it's you back been here in just a just about minutes. enough time um, for this to simmer. It is, it's all just, uh, everything's nice and working together here and it smells so good. So the next step, I'm gonna add some cream cheese um, the recipe, the whole recipe calls for four ounces, so half would be two. I had a little bit more than the two ounces, so I'm just going to use this up. I don't want to have just a little bitty piece left in there, so I'm just going to dump that in there. And then it also just calls for one, look at this. Can you see that? Oh my gosh. This is, I could probably eat this just like this. I love garlic. Anyway, it actually only calls for one, but I've got two. Let's do it. Um, never done this. It just says to start at the bottom and squeeze and squeeze all of that out. Easier said than done. Hear that beeping? That's my bread. My bread is done. I also sliced up some, just some smoked sausage and I just have it browning over here on the stove. We're going to sprinkle that on top of the soup. Let me wash my hands and we'll stir this. Okay, I'm back. I've got my little immersion blender here. Let me check these. Okay, um, you just leave the cream cheese and everything in here just until it kind of starts uh, getting warm where it's, um, it's dissolving a little bit easier. I grabbed my immersion blender and we're going to blend it up and I put on my apron because I'm messy. So we're just going to blend this up until it's smooth. Okay, I got it all blended up. It's real smooth. I'm gonna taste it. And I turned my fire off, cause I mean, it got thick. It's really, really, really thick. Let me see if y'all can see this. It is, it's, uh, I don't know if it's gonna show. There, uh, there. It is, it's super thick. That's actually really good, you guys. I like curry, so I think this is good. The true test will be seeing if my husband likes it, but I like this. I could eat just this even without the sausage on it. This is good. This will be a keeper for me. Okay, we're back. The bread is done. I'm gonna get it out of here. This one, I have to be honest, looks a little funky. <laughs> it looks real funky. So this was Parmesan, Parmesan peppercorn, is that right? Parmesan peppercorn French bread. You have to see this. It looks like an alien something. But hey, as long as it tastes good, we're gonna be okay. I'm actually wondering if there's something, if my yeast is bad. Um, this is the second thing I've done with it, and I noticed, um, yeah, I, 
anyway, I'm, I'm thinking that my yeast may be bad, so. Anyway, so let's get this out of here and let's, let's test it and see. Hopefully it'll at least taste good. I left the paddle in it, so if you can see that. Let me get something, see if I can get that out of there. booger is hot. It's got the crunchy top like French bread. So let's see. Here's the test. Mm, it's crumbly. And kind of tough. Honestly, the taste isn't bad. It's like there's no taste. Yeah, it's like there's no taste. Butter. Butter fixes everything. Let's see if butter helps it. Not my favorite. Not my favorite. It's not bad, but it's not it's not my favorite by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think I would do it again um, unless I found a better recipe for it. It doesn't it doesn't look like it rise like it rose. So it it is done. It's not doughy or anything. It is done. It's hot. It's not, I mean, it kind of, it looks doughy, but when you touch it, it's dry. It's not, but it doesn't have like the big air pockets and stuff, which makes me think that my yeast may not be good. And you know how usually bread has a really, uh, yeast bread has a really yeasty smell and, and you can really smell it and taste it? I don't smell it and I really don't taste it. So it'll be okay for dinner. I mean, we're going to eat it um, with the, the soup over there. So, who knows, maybe together they'll be okay, because that soup is good. I like that soup, so we'll see. We'll give it a whirl, so. So there you have it, guys. My crazy meal. Week number one, 52 weeks. It's gotta get better from here. The soup is, is amazing. I sprinkled a little bit of thyme on top and then added the just the browned um, smoked sausage it's really 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 good and then the bread the parmesan peppercorn french bread just the recipe out of the Cuisinart cookbook and it's kind of but the soup amazing and that is roasted what is it? Roasted butternut squash soup. Super good. So there you go. 52 weeks, one down, 51 to go. Okay guys, we just got done with dinner, so I figured I would come back and just kind of give a little bit of an update <clears throat> on, on what we thought of it. I thought, well, maybe this would be a good idea to end each one of these. So we'll start with the soup. The soup had, it, it's got a great flavor. Um, it was really, really thick though. So honestly, I probably screwed it up when I went ahead and added that other half of the, since I halved every, all the rest of the ingredients in there, I probably should have left it alone. Um, so if you follow the recipe, hopefully that will be a little bit closer to the right, uh, texture. 
But other than that, the flavor was, was awesome. That we would absolutely do again. I, we loved it. Um, my husband really liked it. That was his only complaint too, is that it was really thick. I mean, super filling. Just a small little bowl was, was plenty for each one of us. That brings us to the bread. The bread was disgusting. I mean, it was, I've got, a, I've got it sitting here because you got to see this. It looks like some kind of alien bread. Can you see this? I mean, I, I have no idea what happened here, but the taste is bad. Um, I, I mean, I guess I can't really say bad. There's like no taste. It's just a, when you eat it, it's crunchy on the top and pretty chewy here in the middle, but it, it's just, no. This one is a no, absolutely not, never again. That's, my husband took a couple of bites of it and he's like, oh no, I don't like the bread. So that is, that is a no. And then uh, the pineapple um, crisp, that was to die for. It was awesome. My husband even said, can I have that for breakfast tomorrow morning? So that one is absolutely a must. So, and that one was just a recipe that I totally made up. So I will put in the description box, I will put the ingredients to that. And of course I will link the recipe to uh, the soup uh, that, that I found. I hope I saved that. I know I found it on Pinterest. Hopefully I saved that recipe and I can put it down there. Um, if not, if I can't find it, I will at least put the recipe down there and hopefully at some point I will find it. I'm really bad about finding recipes and I forget to pin them and then when I go back looking, I can't find it. So hopefully I did, um, we'll see. So uh, look for that in the description box, but I just wanted to kind of end it and and I didn't want to just, just leave it with my thumbs up for the pineapple. My husband's like, I don't want to be on camera and the, the table and everything is an absolute disaster. My, my kitchen sink is just overflowing with dishes over there. So I didn't want to, uh, I, I didn't want to be on camera <laughs> right then so you could see the mess all around here. So anyway, that I just figured I would do it like this and just kind of give everybody um, the final update on it. So it was good for the first week. Definitely a recipe I would, would probably never have even looked for again or uh, looked for in the beginning. Um, but I'm glad we did. We liked it. And honestly, I, I think we would try it again. There's just a couple of things that I would do different, like probably follow the recipe. Now, I actually really loved the taste of that garam masala in there. So I might actually do that again and leave the, the cumin out or add it with it. So um, I'm not sure, but I, I, we really, we really like that. But we're curry people. So if you don't like curry, you may not want to add that in there. Um, but the only other thing I could think of is if it turned out really thick like that again, probably instead of adding the cream cheese, I may either add like um, half and half, maybe even some coconut milk if I'm going the curry direction, um, just to make it a little bit thinner. So anyway, just a couple of ideas. It's one that I'm not going to toss the recipe out. I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to add my notes down to the bottom so that if I do make it again, I'm going to kind of tweak it a little bit to what we like. You guys may like it like that. So if any of you try it, y'all let me know. Um, if you try it and you don't like it, let me know. You know, let me know what you think. So um, so today is, what is today? Today is Friday um, and the 7th. So sometime within the next week, I will have another recipe. I'm going to be looking for something different. I have no idea what it's going to be. And it will probably be um, a week from today. I probably will do it either on Thursday or Friday of, of next week. Um, my husband got quite a bit of business stuff to do this week, so he might we might be just grabbing sandwiches and stuff like that. I am still sticking to the um, three meals at home. Um, actually, we went to lunch today. We went to breakfast and lunch today. Oops. Um, but we did. We went out to breakfast and lunch today. That is the first time I've eaten out all week. So, I'm doing good. Um, so I'll, I'll count that as a win, even though I went twice in one day. <laughs> so anyway, um, that's uh, it for tonight. That's first week. So we've got 51 more to go. I'm going to be looking for another recipe for next week. So y'all leave me uh, suggestions in the, in the uh, comment section if there's something you want me to try. 
I will give it a try. So um, I will, I guess that's it for tonight. And I will see you guys here in the next video. Y'all have a good night and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.